Hello, Matt here with eLearning Services. Today I want to show you how to use the simple certificate activity. You may want to allow students to print out a certificate at the end of a course to prove that they've done it or just so they can have something to prove to themselves. You know your completion reports will show completion of the course. So it's not a necessary thing, but some employees and some agencies like to have a certificate. So this is a good way to set one up. It's pretty simple, works like a champ. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it in my effective listening course that I have not finished. I'm gonna click on that. Editing is on. I had already turned it on here. So we're gonna add it in topic three. So go ahead and click add activity and then click on simple certificate. In case you didn't know, you can also double click on these things to uh, make it go a little quicker. All right, so let's name it. This is effective listening. So I'm gonna say effective listening uh, certificate. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and expand all. All right, so this is where you put in the image file. Now the image file is something you actually have to work on yourself potentially. I have a blank certificate that I'm more than happy to share with everyone. I'm, I'll be adding it to Google Plus as well. But this is where you drop it, drag and drop it. So let me show you what I have. Here is a blank certificate, okay? Now I'll show you what I've done to mine because what this certificate activity will do is add the person's name, the name of the course and the date, okay? But the rest of the stuff, the certificate parts, aren't in there unless you have an image. So here's the blank one that I'm happy to share. And then you gotta add some things to flush it out. So let me show you the one that I have finished. Certificate here, this one's for me. So what I added was a graphic in the background, my graphic for e-learning, and then a signature. All right, so I can share a Photoshop file or a JPEG and you guys can decide how you wanna work with it. Uh, if you have absolutely no image editing capabilities or software, I'm more than happy to help you out with it. Okay, so you have to make this. The size of it is, the size that I use that has worked really well is 791 by 560, just in case you wanna make your own. I know it's very specific, but that's what it ended up as and it works well, so I just stuck with it. So 791 by 560 is the JPEG or Photoshop file size, okay? So let's go ahead and close that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag in mine right here. All right, so now you can see it in there, there's the image. All right, so the next part is adding the text. This is kind of um, fancy in that you gotta do code. I mean, you don't have to do code, but I'll show you what I mean here in a second. I will be posting along with this video in Google Plus the code that makes this certificate work. And I'll show you what it is right now. So basically you want to have text in there that says congrats and then it puts their name in it, whoever's it whoever took it, um, the course name and the date. In order to do that, you have to have brackets around it that puts that information in there automatically. Okay, so this is what it looks like, okay? Now, if you just tried to type this in and format it, you might have a hard time getting it, getting it formatted just like this. So what I've done is I've included the code um, on the Google Plus page that you can copy and paste into here, but I'll show you where you have to copy and paste it to. So if you're gonna do code, you need to click on this little icon, show more buttons, and then click on this little icon, which is code, okay? So this is what it takes to make those words appear on your certificate, okay? So you'll copy and then just paste that in, all right? And that makes it look like this. Okay, so then we can move on down. I'm gonna show a little more here. In fact, you need to, underneath certificate text, you need to click show more. I found that these numbers are okay. You can leave them alone, you can leave this alone, but you do need to change this or else stuff will overlap. Now this depends on how you lay out your certificate, but with mine, how you've seen it, you have to change this to 60. Whoa. 
All right. I ignore the certificate back page because I don't have back page printing capabilities or I don't care or know how to do that. So I ignore this section. Here's some other options. You can decide when you want the print date from. So right now it's on date issued. I like to do it on course completion because then you know when they completed the course. Otherwise it would just be when they went to go get a certificate because they could have finished the course a long time ago and then gone back to get their certificate. Okay, so this is when they finish the course. Uh, I don't typically have grades in mind, but you could have grades put on your certificate. And that's the format there of that. And then if you want some sort of unique code, you could have a QR code printed on it. And then the show more is just more about the QR code and its position. All right. So the issue options, this is important. You can have it email all the teachers or all the people that are uh, classified as teachers for that course or you can just add emails right here. So anytime somebody gets a certificate, you'll get an email. And this one's important as well. So this is how it's delivered to the student. I typically do it open in a new window from which they can print or save, but that's not necessarily that obvious. You could also have it email them the certificate. I might start doing that. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I'm sure it works. When we show more, we just, see who the email is coming from if there's an email sent and you can go ahead and change that to teacher's name or your name or whatever all right so common module settings you want it to be visible groups don't necessarily matter unless you're setting up something uh, so different groups of people are getting different certificates perhaps but typically you can just leave this alone typically i add a restriction i restrict access to the certificate so basically they have to finish the course before they can get a certificate. So how you do that is you add a restriction here. And what I do is usually it's an activity. So a scoring package or a video or something. So you select activity completion, you choose it. Mine's a label in this one because it didn't have a name, but you could choose your scoring package or your video activity there. They will all be in there. Okay. So you choose it must be marked complete. Good. One little detail here. If you want them to see the fact that they must finish that before the certificate will appear, leave the eyeball as it is. If you don't want them to see that, which means they just won't see the certificate until they do it, you can hide it with the check mark through the eye. Okay. I'm going to let them know they can read under certificate that they have to finish it first, finish the activity first, and then the certificate will show. Okay, that's personal preference probably. All right, and then so this is a certificate. So I would probably say do not indicate activity completion because it's not really an activity. Um, certificates in my case are just typically for folks, their preference, if they want proof of it or if maybe their agency requires it, but it's not something that uh, needs to show completion. So I think that's the best way to go with that. All right. So I'm going to save and return to course. All right, so we're back to the course. The only thing in here is that label that I required them to do before this showed up. Okay, so right now it's grayed out, but because I left the eyeball uncrossed out, it tells them it's not available unless the activity label is marked complete. All right, so I would have to go ahead and watch this. And as soon as I did, We'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna watch this. It's pretty quick. Okay, I wasn't gonna make you guys watch that. So once you've gone through the activity, watched the video or whatever, and you have a check mark there, you can go ahead and click on the certificate. Right now I'm in here as an admin, so it's not working exactly like it would, but this would be darker and you can click on it. So then you click on get certificate. And in my case, it pops up in a pop-up and you can see that it inserted, congratulations, Matthew Nagy, you completed effective listening on July 18th, 2016. So the pop-up's nice because they can download it right here. They can print it and they can reload it. It's all ready to go. That's why I do it. It's pretty slick. Again, you could have it emailed to them or um, they could. it could be forced download right when they click on it. I find this is the nicest way. 
As a teacher or an administrator, you can also do some things within this area of the certificate. So this is after you click on the certificate. Let's go back. If you click on it here, actually click on the certificate, you will see these things. All right, so you can look at all the issued certificates or you can do some interesting things with bulk operations. Now we don't have any in here right now, but it still shows everything. So you can filter out your certificates and then you can choose between these three things to do. So you could download the certificates in a PDF file, you could download them in a zip file, or you could send to the user's email. So if you wanted to send everybody who's completed the course their certificate by email, you could come in here and do that. As far as certificates go, the simple certificate activity, the things you got to remember is you have to make the certificate file or image. You got to add certain elements to it. You got to upload that image. And then you have to put in the code that makes the congrats you've completed and the date. Okay. And then a few settings and you've got a perfect certificate for people to use and print out after your course. All right. Well, thanks for your time.